Ben Wiedemann joins us now from Jerusalem with more on these developments. Ben. Yes, Monita. Senator George Mitchell, the special U.S. envoy to the Middle East, uh, was in Egypt yesterday and today. He's heading to Israel uh, later this afternoon. Obviously, his first priority is to make sure that the ceasefires that are in, in place in Gaza actually remain. Obviously, uh, they were seriously shaken by yesterday's roadside bomb attack on an Israeli jeep that left one Israeli soldier dead. Now, after a press conference in Cairo this morning, uh, Senator Mitchell stressed that this time the United States is serious about peace in the Middle East. Uh, the United States is grateful to Egypt for its leadership uh, in bringing about a ceasefire. Uh, it is of critical importance that the ceasefire be extended and consolidated, uh, and we support Egypt's continuing efforts in that regard. The United States is committed to vigorously pursuing uh, lasting peace and stability. We shall see if this decision by President Okay, we shall see if uh, he, Senator Mitchell actually achieves anything. You have to remember, Monita, that uh, both sides, Israelis and Palestinians, have seen a long line of envoys from the United States, from the Quartet, from the European Union, come here, try to work out some sort of lasting peace, but uh, that goal has been very difficult, to say the least. Monita? Yeah, Ben, you also have to wonder whether or not the, the players on both sides are actually serious about wanting peace. But having said that, uh, there, it, it has been quoted that the, the advisor to the Prime Minister of Hamas was saying that uh, he was wondering if, if, Ms., if Senator Mitchell will actually go talk to them. Is there any indication that that would, would actually happen? That is highly unlikely to happen. We've heard uh, President Obama restate the old position of the Bush administration uh, that the United States will not speak to Hamas as long as it does not renounce terror, agree to past uh, agreements, go along with past agreements, and renounce, renounce violence. It's highly unlikely. Now, many people are questioning what's the point of diplomacy if the only people the United States is going to speak to are its friends. The, the regime in Ramallah, the Palestinian regime there, the Israelis, uh, the United States has made it clear it's not going to speak to Hamas. So essentially, they're leaving out one very critical player in this situation, and it doesn't appear that the United States is going to change its position. Hamas would very much like the United States to speak with it. I've spoken with senior advisors in the Hamas government. I've spoken to the Prime Minister, Ismail Haniya, of the uh, Hamas government. They would be very eager for the United States to open a dialogue, but it doesn't appear that that's going to happen. Manita? Yes, Angela. Well, I hate to say it, but many people e here have heard uh, that sort, those words before that the United States is committed to peace and stability uh, in the Middle East. The question is, what are they going to do to achieve it? We saw endless visits, for instance, by the former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice uh, to the region. She met many times with Palestinian leaders with Israeli leaders. There was much talk. There was a lot of high-profile uh, meetings like the Annapolis summit in November 2007, but very little came of it. So really the question is how committed is the United States uh, really to achieving peace? We've heard that, uh, for instance, the Palestinian president Mahmoud Abbas in Ramallah has said that he doesn't believe the Israelis are committed to peace. Uh, the Israelis, for their part, would like to deal exclusively with uh, President Mahmoud Abbas. Nobody seems to want to talk to Hamas, but of course Hamas is in control of Gaza where 1.5 million Palestinians live. And it does not appear at this point that the United States is going to break its embargo of Hamas. Uh, Pre Senator Mitchell isn't going to be me meeting or communicating with many or any Hamas leaders. So the question is, will anything really be achieved if they don't talk to Hamas. Anjali? Israelis were worried that President Obama wouldn't be quite as sympathetic to them as his predecessor had been. How much of Mr. Mitchell's trip do you think is going to be aimed at addressing that view? Well, certainly what we've heard from President Obama is that he's going to be listening. And uh, the feeling among at least Palestinians was that the United States 
sent its envoys to the Middle East, not so much to listen, but to give orders. Now, the Israelis had a different view of the Bush administration. They rather liked it. Uh, they felt that uh, the Bush administration was very sympathetic uh, to the Israeli position. Clearly, the, the, what the United States may be trying to do is make a break from that to eight years of very what, what was seen as very one-sided U.S. Middle Eastern policy. Uh, it's noteworthy, for instance, that the first head of state that President Obama spoke to was Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian uh, president. So the hope is, at least on the Palestinian side, is that that eight years of one-sided U.S. Middle Eastern policy is going to change. Anjali? Okay, Ben, thank you very much indeed for uh, that. Ben Wiedemann there, live in Jerusalem.